So, uh, from a couple of days before we started this book in uh, uh, Apostle uh, Paul, from a greetings, a salutation in verse 1 to 4, we saw that the visible signs of a transformed life. This we saw from the very heart cry of Apostle Paul. So, how this one man's heart cry and a passion and a love for God uh, was uh, very visible and how a uh, transformed life should be that we saw from uh, verses 1 to 4, um, how God glorifying, even as we, we started writing this uh, letter to create uh, both assemblies in the crate, this is like CCC uh, or CC to assembly, assemblies of the uh, in the town of uh, island of Crete, but personal letter to Titus also this is. Okay, so you can see that both it is a uh, very beautiful way he, as he starts, he can see he pours out his heart in this first four words. That's what we saw, how uh, a transformed life as a, from Paul's life we saw. And then we, we uh, from Titus 1, 5 to 6, chapter 1 verse 5 to 16. 5 to 16 we saw the zeal of the Lord, the zeal of the Lord, how God is building and protecting his church, his bride, both building and protecting, building uh, God's grace and word, how it shapes his stewards and pastors, both to build, that is to build lives by feeding the lambs, that's what Jesus said, right? Feeding the lambs and also to protect the church, protect by fighting the wolves. So that is what we saw, how God is preparing his stewards. That's what we saw from verse 5 to 16 of chapter 1. And then uh, moving on, Again, these chapters are for our own understanding. Previously, when Paul wrote a letter, there was no such things. It's all a one full letter. I'm not sure how many of you write letters these days. Uh, I'm, I'm more uh, happy to see that uh, some of my children, they write to their pen pals. That's the only letter. When I see that, it's so nice to see the flow of that. When you see that is the flow here, you see that in chapter 2, verse, we saw from chapter 2, verse 1 to 10, we studied that how a spiritually healthy church, a spiritually sound church uh, is uh, thus powered by sound doctrine. That is the gospel truth we saw that in which every Christian and we saw various distinct groups and everyone are covered here. Whether we have gray hair or not, old men and old women both are covered and younger women and younger men are covered. Employees and employers are covered. We saw all distinct spheres of our life and we all have a uh, gospel obligation, living gospel obligation, proclaiming God's truth and word in our lives wherever God has placed us. That we saw from verse 1 to 10 and the crux of the matter or the essence what we saw last week is from verse 11 to 15 of chapter 2 and this is like a sandwich I was telling that. This is like a sandwich that covers all these instructions above and below what we are going to see in this book of Titus and this is like an essence. Of course the similar essence is also repeated elsewhere but this verse 11 to 15 is Jesus is the grace of God that appeared. God revealed this through the truth of gospel. That is what we saw that how this grace of God that is Jesus Christ personified form Jesus Christ appeared, appeared to us for two things. One is to save us and to continually sanctify us. That's what we saw from verse 11 to 15. The four aspects of God's eternal plan in Christ. How grace appeared, that is Christ appeared. How this grace will appear, that is the glory appearing of in the form of Jesus Christ. The same Christ was lifted up. We saw that and the angel said that. They may you will come. That's the glory appearing. And that is our motivation as we look for the blessed hope. And we saw that how... Uh, Christ atoned us, atoned for our uh, sins. He gave himself for us and we saw how God authorized this great commission and his authority is from God. That's what we saw from verse 11 to 15. And today's text is from uh, chapter 3, uh, verse, uh, uh, in fact, I will uh, just iterate this whole chapter. We were trying to see in a four uh, helps or four aspects of uh, our life in Christ, a transformed life in Christ. But today we will be mostly covering two things of the first two uh, portions of this which covers from verse 1 to 7. That's verse 1 to 7. Uh, let's look into the verse as we read. Anyway, I will read the whole chapter for uh, clarity's sake. Chapter 3 of Titus. 
remind them to be submissive to the rulers and authorities to be obedient to be ready for every good work to speak evil of no one to avoid quarreling to be gentle and to show perfect courtesy toward all people for we ourselves were once foolish disobedient led astray slaves to passions and pleasures passing our days in malice and envy hated by others and hating one another fourth was but when the goodness and kind and loving kindness of god as savior appeared he saved us he saved us not because of our works done by us in righteousness but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the holy spirit whom he poured out on us richly through jesus christ our savior so that being justified by his grace we might become higher according to the hope of the eternal life it was this saying is trustworthy and i want you to insist on these things so that those who believe in god may be careful to devote themselves to good works these things are excellent and profitable for people but avoid foolish controversies genealogies dissensions and quarrels about the law for they are unprofitable they are unprofitable and worthless as for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice have nothing more to do with him knowing that such a person is robbed and sinful he is self condemned when i send artemus and tychicus to you do your best to come to me at nicopolis for i have decided to spend the winter there do your best to speed zenus the lawyer and apollos on their way see that they lack nothing and let our people learn to devote themselves to good works so as to help cases of urgent need and not be unfruitful all who are with me send greetings to you greet those who love us in faith grace be with you all let's pray father we thank you lord for this book of titus as we read from your word lord you are the one who speak to us it is your holy spirit that stirs our heart and lord even though these words are written so many years before and you have protected us in for us lord and lord it is for your glory and to live a life a transformed life in this world lord thank you that this goodness and loving kindness through the personified form of jesus christ appeared and you did this to save us not because of our own works which are filthy rags but it is because of who you are and you washed us cleansed us you renewed us through your holy spirit and you poured richly on us lord holy spirit and jesus christ and thank you lord that we can live transformed life even as we look into your word speak to us father help us stir our hearts regenerate us father for your glory in jesus name amen so today's text especially from uh, verse 1 to 15 we see that there are uh, god's grace and word appeared to us it is personally for every individual every believer it is for us so that we will live a transformed lives in christ a transformed life that's what we see today that god's grace and word that is christ appeared for us that we may live transformed life we are visible signs of god's new creation and people around us may see a new life and glorify god today's text gives four helps or four aspects of this fruitful life in christ and it is a help for us also one is this that in your handouts again answers will be there one is thought life in christ a life with certain reminders and remembrance especially in the light of god's grace so first is a thought life a new life in christ second understanding the newness that we received in christ the newness that we received it is not a patchwork Oh, sometimes i go for alterations where they do a patchwork and give it's not like that god's work in our life is a new life that god gives it's a newness that we received because of the finished work on the cross because of the finished work on the cross that you and i received it that is a new life in christ and thirdly a profitable life in christ a life that is exemplary and beneficial and profitable in the sight of a great god and savior who saved us and fourth is that fellowship life a life of fellowship fellowship 
with the body of Christ, fellowship in the body of Christ, which raises a sweet and acceptable fragrance to God, giving warmth to a believer. Every Christian, it gives a warmth to us to be a radiance of God's glory. And this are the four helps also. These are four helps and also gives us a clarity and understanding and aspects of a transformed life in Christ. Titus is to Titus or to tighten us in Christ. Sound doctrine that helps us to live a sound and godly lives. Loving God and loving our neighbors. A life that uh, transforms or you know, radiates God's love wherever God has placed us to our neighbors. And that's what is Titus all about. Uh, I just wanted to take your attention to uh, what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13 to 16. He said this, You are the light and salt, and it is you and I. It's not talking about some third person. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything. Look at the text here. It says that, except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. Interesting, no, is it? Jesus says he is the lamp and he is the light. Now here in chapter 5, verse 13 to 16 of Matthew, he says that you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light, in the same way, let your light shine before others. Let your light shine before others. And it's a commandment. It's not an option. So that they may see your good works. For what reason? It's not to glorify you. It's not to say that, wow, what you have done. You are great. You are good. You are wonderful. You are holy. It's not that. Here, they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That is the purpose. This is the presentation in today's text from Titus chapter 3. Christian, you are the light of the world. Let the image of Christ reflect and radiate in you and from you. That is Titus here, what he brings as he brings all the link together and then as he brings a closure in this uh, last ending verse of this book with love that he has written to this uh, churches and assemblies in Crete, the island of Crete, this is what he says. To this effect, today's text gives us some helps and aspects or means. See, uh, I, I was, uh, uh, some interior work is going on in our life. It's uh, in, in our, not in our life, sorry. It is in our house, some interior and renovation is going on. Uh, uh, there are workers here, okay. Taking help is part and parcel of our everyday, day-to-day life. And even as a workers, when they come, they take a lot of help in terms of not only other helpers, but also tools and simple machines, it can be anything. One welder turned back. And uh, he was doing some kind of uh, welding work and uh, grill work. And he forgot his uh, measuring tape. Uh, and one day he forgot his hammer. And interesting to see that. And, and he was helpless without the tool in his life. And uh, uh, even though I gave some kind of hammer with me, it was not helpful for him because he needs one kind of help that he has a tool in his life. And, and also, if you see likewise a clarity or having certain aspects in our mind, when while you're driving, it's uh, it's vital for us. And nowadays uh, we have GPS, so you just close your eyes and just put GPS wherever it takes you go. You know, one day we were trying to do that, and the GPS was showing one particular restaurant, 150 kilometers we have to travel off the route because by mistake it was selected. So you, it's it's impossible that you don't have an aspect. If you're going to north, you have to have a direction towards north. You cannot go towards south. That should be your overall aspect and clarity of your direction even while you drive. I like the way R.C. Sproul puts this in from this Alice in Wonderland where a cat sits and the girl comes and asks uh, there is a why, why division of the road and she asks which direction I have to go and the cat asks, I forgot the character's name but uh, uh, which direction I should go? It depends on your destination. It depends on your destination which direction you have to go. And she says, I don't have any destination. Then it hardly matters. Both hill or aspect or a direction. It doesn't matter if we are, our destination is not clear or you have not decided which direction you are going to go. So today we have, you see that in order to live this transformed life, you know, we need helps. We need aspects and clarity and means in our lives. It is unavoidable, isn't it? 
we have our help of the holy spirit to help us to live this transformed life in this world jesus said this in john 14 if you love me you will keep my commandments and i will ask the father and he will give you the helper to be with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him you know him for he dwells within you with you and will be in you i will not leave you as orphans i will come to you this is what jesus said you and i have a helper and it was richly poured in us that's what we will see in this verse so titus responsibility it's uh, it is it's good for us to remember that paul wrote this to the book of uh, when he wrote this to the uh, assemblies in crete they didn't have again i want to emphasize that they didn't have this new testament fully with them they had some scrolls of old testament with them and these are the letters and life words god breathed words and god is building and using these men of god to graciously uh, uh, give to this church and today to us today to us that how god protected this god breath words so that gospel truth and new covenant may be revealed to us and today we are blessed because we have the full word and paul charged to titus is to repeat this so titus has to, the responsibility for him given is here the charge is that he has to not just read and delete it once or read and then forget it but to speak remind urge the christians in crete that's what we will see this these words of life he has given charge to ponder on this meditate himself and also to the church and pray these words along with the believers that the holy spirit may stir them to live a transformed life among the unbelievers in crete we saw in first chapter verse nay was uh, uh, 12 one of the cretans a prophet of their own said cretans are liars evil beasts and lazy gluttons both a false prophets and also unbelievers and people who came from that background also trying to take god's grace for granted that what they believe and what they live can be different that is what it was promoted we can read this in romans chapter 1 also that people who who want to live such life not only live they also promote and they want to you know graciously or uh, uh, ungraciously i don't know how to put it they want to uh, form a gang of that what they believe they want to spread that so that is what is happening but here that is the char- charge for him here we are the light and salt it is the charge for us today and even that day to titus in the island of crete no difference and it will be the same until the lord returns it is unfortunate to see at times a christian mindset towards a neighbors towards people of this world the same people who are supposed we are supposed to be light and salt for them that we save them as in distant okay or we distance ourselves of course we are not to be a friend in terms of uh, their likings and the passions but here we cannot be absolutely disconnected from them and become so called enemies for the f- world around them that is not what we are meant for as a light and salt of god you see this in uh, again i want to bring to verses from john chapter 17 but i know i am coming to you and these things i speak to you in the world speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves i have given them your word jesus is, jesus prayer this is to father and jesus is telling this i have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as i am not of the world i do not ask that you take them out of the world so it's not that is not what we are to we are not to be popped out of this world that's what jesus is saying i do not ask that you take them out of the world but that you keep them from the evil one john 17 chapter they are not of the world just as i am not of the world sanctify them in truth your word is truth as you sent me into the world so i have sent him sent them into the world that is we we here i have sent them into the world and for their sake i consecrate myself that they may also be sanctified in truth so it's the the thing is that uh, when when we are born again we will not be taken out immediately vanish like that we will not be that's not the reality and so we cannot disconnect ourselves and be in silos uh, you know there are some groups which believed this that's what they deserted themselves in deserts and in fact dead sea scrolls are one of the examples for us of such groups who who went away from the Uh, thought that that is the way they have to isolate themselves from the world that's not what christian life is yes we will be protected from the evil one sanctified by the gospel truth we are in this world but not of this world same as christ 
was not of this world. Christ was sent into the world by God and we are also sent into this world through Christ and because of the work, finished work in, of Christ. We are torch bearers of Christ to our neighbors wherever God has placed us. True mark of Christian who has clear understanding of this gospel truth is this, a life of cheerful obedience that springs out from the faith in Jesus Christ in our life. What we believe, our faith, and how that transforms. The transformed life will reflect Christ's light in the darkness around us. In today's text, we can read today that uh, we will understand few aspects of this and helps of this illuminating life. Let's look, to look at the verse 1 to 3. Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Verse 3, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. When we read this text, first help is this, our thought life in Christ. Our thought life in Christ. It is to be clear in our mind, in our thoughts, in our understanding, who we are now and what is our identity in Christ. You would have heard this famous quote I was taking from, that the greatest battles are fought in silent chambers of mind. And like this, so many quotes are there. But the question is, how do we fight? Sometimes these things, generally speaking, and sometimes these perspectives and positive thinking quotes are not, it does not help us actually. Since Bible tells us that every inclination of man's heart is evil, Genesis, if you go, that's what God had to send uh, and talk to Noah and send this, those days itself, send a flood. Because if you leave our heart like this, it automatically bends towards inclination, is towards evil. And Bible tells us that our heart is deceptive above all. But for a Christian, if you see, we have indwelling spirit in us because of victory of the cross. We are not slaves anymore to sin. But in Christ it's possible. That's what it says in, uh, I was just picking a verse from Corinthians saying, Paul is written here, for though we walk in flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power and destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinions raised against the knowledge of God and take captive or take every thought captive to obey Christ. It's a battlefield and it is given to us through Jesus Christ. And it is not a positive thinking. It is not, you repeat it. It repeated just without Christ. That is not the way it is. For a Christian, it's different battle this is. Because what Christ has done, you start from there. Your starting point is the finishing point of cross. In verse 1, the charge to Titus is to keep reminding this. That's what he says. The command is, remind them. Remind these Cretans. Remind these people. Keep reminding this truth the gospel truth to the spiritual leaders, to the members of the church. So, reminders, verse 1 and 2, when you see reminders. So, one reason we give, keep reminders, I, am, I, I used to keep so many reminders. Uh, one reason, simply because we forget. Unless you are exceptional and your memory is very good, like Einstein or I don't know whom to say, but unless that we write notes and reminders, nowadays paper notes are gone. You know, it's all like... Uh, notes itself becomes a distraction, right? To take keys or tickets or pencil or eraser, whatever, we keep reminders. Because in hurry, we forget. It happens. But sometimes reminders are to ensure that we better don't forget some things, right? We better don't forget few things in life, isn't it? I don't know how to give it's a humorous thing, but yeah, wedding anniversary or birthday or when you met on these days, sometimes you don't, you keep reminding so that you don't forget and, and bring disaster sometimes. In verse 1 and 2, we see reminders here is to be submissive to the rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to demonstrate readiness for every good work. Indeed, it is a reminder of our new duties. It is by the virtue of your new identity in loyalty to our loving God. So these reminders, that's what he's saying, to be submissive to the rulers and authorities. When he talks, he says that no authority exists without the ordinance of, because we read this in Colossians, right? It's like no authority exists without God allowing it, whatever may be the case. That's what, this is the, this is the crux here. This is what Paul is trying to put it here, say, to Titus saying that 
uh, and, and uh, we will go through that. If you see here, this is because of your allegiance and loyalty to God. That is what is in your picture, greater picture and in your mind. A Christian sees that oh, I, have a, I have a God who is in control of everything. I know that this is something authority is placed, but I am actually obeying or submissive to the rulers because of these greater things in my mind. Okay? That's, what, that's what a Christian's viewpoint is that because no authority is beyond or away from God's divine authority or almighty God who is in control of all things, both heaven and earth. Christian submission and obedience to any authority, if you read the verse, is because God has placed it and it is a practical demonstration of our unshakable, unshakable confidence in this higher calling and belief, belief that we have in Christ. Certainly this submission is definitely, there is a scope to it and it is to be in the Lord and it is to be, it is not that word of God or faith should be compromised there. That is definitely the scope. But even that's what it says when you obey uh, parents, uh, children, you, when you obey your parents, the thing is that in the Lord, if your parents are unbelievers, there are some exceptions. And, and disciples themselves did this when, when the authorities, the so-called spiritual leaders told them, don't speak about Christ. They said, sorry, I'm sorry. We ought to speak about God. Should you obey man or God? So there is exceptions. But here the understanding is this, that Oh, the, this reminder is this, that people may see us. People may see us, our lives of, of submission, obedience. Again, the reminder is that while doing so, the attitude also it comes into picture. The attitude is not just, okay, fine, get lost, let me be submissive, whether in office or anything. <laughs> That's not the attitude here. And while doing so, in general, not only obeying to the authorities and uh, submits to the rulers and governments, but here also the promoted attitude in this text is, you see this text was, was uh, if you read verse 2, it says that to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. And, and this verse says that to avoid worldly things like slanderous accusations and insults, which is very common. It is springs out from our wickedness. It's a very common thing. Just immediately we, we are ready to bring accusations and slanders. Actually, slanderer in the Bible is mainly given for uh, the evil one. Uh, he is the one who slanders us, right? So that is the uh, immediate thing. To avoid quarreling, but actively pursue. Not only to avoid, but actively pursue. You see this. To actively pursue godly virtues. What are these? Gentleness, that is tolerance. Demonstration of perfect courtesy, not just courtesy. Perfect courtesy, perfect kindness toward all people. And this is what is a thought life, right? It is something that you should keep reminding yourself, keep thinking that this is what I am. This is my duty. This is my responsibility. And that is by the virtue of my identity in Christ. That's what the, the help here is. The aspect is heavenly citizenship does not rule out our earthly responsibilities wherever God has placed you. And that is for a purpose. Paul is telling this to Christians who are subjects of the Roman authority, Roman unbelieving rulers and authorities of Roman Empire. Gruesome things used to happen. In light of sinful and unbelieving settings around us, at times such submissiveness and virtues which we are trying to address here or trying to promote this kind of attitude is unacceptable. Even to Christians for that matter. We may claim this, right? Many times we claim this. We claim that, okay, it's a natural tendency to resist or grudge against it. The usual response is, you don't know. You don't know what is this. You don't know the situation. You don't know how wicked and sinful they are. Oh, why should I submit? Why should I obey? <laughs> this is a question. And it happens in a day-to-day -day life. Even in families, when the Bible says, wives, submit to your husbands. This is for God. As a, it's not that your husband is somebody 100% perfect. Highly impossible. But it is your, above all, there is a God who is there. And same thing for everybody in this even we, as a believers, wherever God has placed us, we see the higher purpose of God. Reminders. Secondly, if you see verse 3, look at the text, verse 3. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. See, when we say that, the usual response is that these people are sinful. These people are wicked. So how do I 
submit to them. How do I do things which is asked here with a good attitude again? Uh, that is the uh, uh, response, right? Now Paul is turning the magic mirror to you, you know, turning them <laughs> and saying that very nicely. You know, you see that. Have you seen old movies? I don't know, nowadays things are different. Uh, old movies or cartoon, old cartoon. Uh, I don't know, Spider-Man or whatever we used to see. Sometimes if you see there is a black white spiral, black and white spiral, like that, you know, it, 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 it brings takes back in time. <laughs> and you remember what was your old time. He sees that up, right? That is, that's what Paul is bringing a picture here. You know, takes back in time, remembrance of who we were, who we were. And it is a remembrance on our erstwhile lifestyle in this text. You see that? This is what Paul is turning the mirror and saying, okay, you don't want to obey your uh, unruly or uh, uh, foolish or uh, rulers or authorities above you. See this mirror now. Is that's what he's, he's showing that. See that mirror now. What does the mirror say? Paul does similar re recalls and it's a remembrance of our own life. He, he asks us to recall. And he recalls us many times in his letters of a, uh, believer's life. He says very boldly and not to put us down. He says our lifestyle. What was your before lifestyle? You are foolish. You are dark. You are in darkness. You are aliens. You are hostile in mind. You know, many things. We, d we cannot go and refer all these things now. But you see, there is a reason. There is a purpose. Because after all, it is Holy Spirit who inspired Paul to write this, isn't it? I remember a true story where a slum boy made it to a management uh, uh, the topmost management schools. And uh, eventually, he was placed in a, uh, one, it means he, th there was an offer for him uh, in an MNC who offered him multi, um, uh, what is it, multi-million uh, package to him. But he rejected that offer. And it is a true story that he rejected the offer because he was from a slum. He, he remembered his roots. His remembrance was that, you know, he cannot leave that. He remembered because his mother used to sell idlis. And it is not a touching social story I am telling, trying to say here. There is a reason behind this uh, illustration. He went back to his life because he was always in his mind, he was remembering where he, where was his roots, where he came from. And that helped him to, you know, turn all his effort and strength and skills and talents towards the poor and the needy because he remembered who he was once. And he did took a, uh, a very beautiful uh, setup where such people were... Uh, where, you know, uh, after reaching Pinnacle, he didn't forget it. After reaching the apex in the corporate ladder, he didn't forget it. He, he went back and he did something. Because he was remembering what was that, his old state. Similarly, Paul is asking us, is telling us, that's what the word, if you see, uh, look at verse uh, 3. For, what is this for? That's what it starts with. Why do we need to show perfect courtesy and not become impatient? Not only any authority for that matter, God has placed in your life uh, with the unbelieving and sinful or rulers or authorities or anybody who is placed, whether it may be husband, your parents or anybody for that matter, God has placed us. We ourselves were once in the very same state. Here the attribute in verse 3, if you see at the text, you see the text there, it takes foolish. Verse 3, we are so foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing of days in malice hated by others and hating one another, this tells the very essence of absence of Christ. There can be many, many more, but uh, absence of Christ in a person's life. It's like we are led astray wherever we want, we went. It's like, it's like that. And Bible clearly says it's a fool who says there is no God, right? Including the rich man. You do, do you remember rich man's story? He's a rich man. There was a good amount of, he planned well. He planned well that he had a, you know, produce maybe multifold and he would have planned very well in terms of his uh, uh, what to what to sow what to reap how to uh, arrange uh, harvesters and he was industrious and uh, uh, planning for ahead he was planning that let me uh, demolish this uh, barn building and let me uh, create a big one and happily live ever after that was his thought right but the absence of true and the living god in his life was the question there okay? the absence of Living on a true God in his life. That is what God is questioning there to this rich man. It's Jesus is telling this parable, right? And he's saying that. He's saying that he was a fool because there was no God in his life. He was led astray. He was foolish. He was hating others. He had no love for others. And hated by others. This is what we were actually. That's what absence of God. He was a fool. And all his actions in his pursuit of his life, though it may look worldly wise, but in God's sight, it was 
foolishness, uh, uh, chasing the wind. That is what we read in uh, Ecclesiastes, and Solomon writes that, right? Uh, that is what we see, chasing the wind. That is what the pursuit, remembrance. We were once in this condition, exactly we were once in this condition. Reminders and remembers should ultimately point a way of thinking to Christ, to what God has done for us. That brings God in our life. That brings you know, presence of God in our life. Not only God as some uh, known power, existing power somewhere, but it is connected to you. We ought to recall this and imitate because God did same to us. Though we were enemies and foolish towards God, He lavished His goodness, loving kindness. That's what we'll be seeing, loving kindness and mercy through Christ, which takes us our attention to the second aspect. And that is the very reason what Paul is telling that why you should not too much be bothered about who is ruling you or what is happening above you and not because of who they are and how you should respond because who they are but because who you are and what God has done in your life. What Christ has done in your life. And that is the essence of uh, your submission, your obedience, your diligence, your readiness, your preparedness to do good work wherever God has placed you. God lavished his goodness and kindness and mercy through Christ. The second aspect is that we receive through this, the new life. New life in Christ. Look at verse, text 4 to 7. As we read, Remember when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared. He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by washing of regeneration, renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become hires according to the hope of eternal life. It's a packed with beautiful words. And this is actually in parallel with what we saw in verse 11 to 14 last week. It is Jesus Christ who gave us this new life. The text starts with but. What is but? I am, I, it's, it's, a, it's a coordinating conjunction that connects the above verses or the text. We can see the reflection here. Why do we need to have a perfect courtesy towards our people? That's what it says. No, verse 2 ends with toward, to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Kindness towards all people. Ir irrespective of their foolishness or sinfulness. It's because this is what? This is the reason. We were also like that. We were foolish, not knowing God. We were led astray. We were in darkness. But, the emphasis here is but, verse 4. Redeemer appeared. Christ appeared for us. How? You see that the goodness and loving kindness of God is here appeared. He saved us. Redeemer appeared and saved us. Let us remember this chapter 3. That from 11. I, I want to read the verse, verse uh, 11 to 14 just for emphasis. For the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation for all people. Training us to renounce something. That is to leave something. To leave this ungodliness and worldly passions. And, and to cling or pursue to this self-controlled, upright and godly lives. That is what is here parallel. It's a reflection here. For the grace of God has appeared. This should keep, I, I would encourage you to memorize this verse 11 to 14. It should keep resonating in a believer's life. It should keep echoing. It should be ringing what God has done. If goodness and loving kindness and mercy has not appeared, of God has not appeared in right time for us, it is of no advantage for us if Jesus would have remained there itself. Not only saved us from sin and wrath of God, he regenerated and renewed us. Read verse 5. Verse 5 says this. He saved us. Why? Absolutely nothing in us or any good works in us. Verse 5. Look at verse 5. Or any merit that saved us. In contrast, it is God's own glory. It is his act, God's work. God's abounding mercy that saved us. That's what verse 5 says, right? He saved us, not because of our work done in righteousness, which Bible declares, even if you, you see it as righteousness, it calls us filthy rags. It's like, it's like dirty things before God. Because he's infinitely holy and righteous. Whatever you claim, it's of no use. But, the, but what, how he saved us? The word here is, Washing of regeneration. A new birth or a rebirth or a born again in Christ. How? This new birth is a wonderful act of God in a believer's life. 
and it is a gift from god and it's a work of the holy spirit in believers life the washing here refers to a cleansing from our past sins that's what washing actually regeneration here the text here is washing of regeneration which is like cleansing us from our sin and made a new creation new in god and how this continues sanctification there is a renewal of the holy spirit john piper press i really loved this word how john piper put it new birth is not vague spiritual change disconnected from history it is an objective historical act of the spirit of god it is it is very certain and fact that happen in our life Sp- because of the act of the spirit of god connecting us by faith to this historical act which happened that is 2000 years before how jesus was in car he appeared lord jesus so that the life he now has has as a crucified and risen savior has become our life because we are united to him new birth happens because jesus came into this world that is the essence of our life as the kindness and love of god and died for our sins and rose again and rose again you see the added to this verse 6 if you read look at the text verse 6 what it says it's a continuation washing of regeneration and renewal of the holy spirit verse 6 whom he poured out on us richly through jesus christ our savior richly he poured out on us richly that is holy spirit was richly poured out through jesus christ our savior so that being justified by grace we might become hires according to hope of eternal life the depth and the means of god's pouring of holy spirit in our life in this new birth is this he poured out holy spirit on us richly and jesus christ is the pipe or a channel or a conduit through which this holy spirit was poured out on us if jesus had not appeared we will not have holy spirit in dwelling in us and this pouring happens via jesus christ and that's what we are ought to be thankful for god's miracle you yourself for god's miracle and we don't need to expect great miracles to have more faith in our life we are his miracle when god saved us when god renewed us when god gave us a new birth when you are born again that itself is wonder work of god anyway when we when we read the word uh, richly poured god poured richly his holy spirit on us i remember one uh, small uh, when i was a single i used to go to restaurants in bangalore where uh, one kannada word i i don't know how many people will know kannada language there eh? but one people one one word i learned quickly is uh, ghee kodi you know what is it ghee kodi is like give me or pour ghee uh, when they they give nice uh, and banana leaf they put uh, uh, what is it dal rice and whatever and then we our friends we ask this word ghee kodi and you can see the waiter graciously with a smile he will come you know happily he will come and he will have a ghee can and he will pour out his very nice deep spoon in that and uh, it looks like as if graciously he pours but you see suddenly there is some magic happen ghee will not be there in your plate he will not pour richly because the spoon takes 360 degree immediately is and quickly takes and then when he pours <laughs> hardly anything will be there god didn't pour out his holy spirit like that to us god god poured out richly on us why there is a reason why you know god didn't mercy you know like like this man the waiter he didn't pour out holy spirit like that the word says but richly through jesus christ god did not hold back or withheld but poured out holy spirit abundantly on every born again believer and there is a reason why i am saying this because paul is emphasizing this to the cretans that is the believers in the great churches of assemblies of crete for a reason here because sometimes it becomes so difficult for us how can i live this transformed life every one of us every believer has challenge right we all think that sometimes this all is theoretical it is not practical because ah you don't know my struggle i have this particular sin which is just withholding me i just can't do this but there is a reason why paul is emphasizing this verse L- look look pay attention here you see this uh, god did not hold back or withheld holy spirit but he richly poured out on us richly here it shows that gushing out you know it's like something like a, uh, how they poured wine or water or something like very graciously and uh, not like that waiter we are not orphans but richly overwhelmed the holy spirit on us promised helper and holy spirit is a promised helper and actually i was blessed in uh, uh, last uh, uh, theology class i have to be thankful to god so many ministry of the holy spirit wills i would encourage you 
you can join theology class our chota titus teaches us it is very beautiful to see that how the ministry of the holy spirit what it does in our lives and it is not it is not theoretical my dear friends and this is a fact in a believer's life that's what he says here you know we are the emphasis here is freely and generously holy spirit has poured out on us and available to help us to live this transformed and god glorifying life it is to help us and it is holy spirit is not something you know he is god trinity god the holy spirit he is indwelling in you and is richly for us and he knows our weakness he knows our cries he knows your dark spots he knows your dark areas where christ is not shining still and it is he who will deliver you when you open your lives to god and that doesn't happen again in silos if you sit in himalayas you should be committed to a church and come under the umbrella of a mentorship and these things are all part and parcel of course god's word is one who touches and that is the way god works god's holy spirit works and and the encouragement here is again chap uh, verse 7 if you look we are the recipients and through this holy spirit holy spirit is also is seen as a deposit for us deposit as a guarantee for the eternal life that we will receive deposit i am not sure how many of you know what is a deposit but it is uh, i i know my grandmother who uh, they were not rich and uh, when they struggle they used to keep to ask money from the pawn brokers and uh, uh, people when they ask money they have to take even the brass vessels or some things at the house they are or of course gold and other thing was a luxury if they have they have to keep as a deposit you know keep as a deposit or guarantee say that okay i will come and give back the money which you can never pay back because of their interest <laughs> that's gone something like that you know deposit when god says holy spirit is a deposit for you that is a guarantee of the holy uh, the eternal life that god has given us through christ and every one of us each believer is a recipient of eternal life that's what verse 7 says that verse 7 what it says so that being justified by his grace we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life justified by his grace god declares us justified through gracious accounting of christ righteousness into our bank account into our credit it was zero balance it was zero balance but god credited if you if somebody some of your family members have gone to us for scholarship you have to show some 10 lakhs or some some lakhs in your bank account so you go and ask some of your uh, many of my friends did this you have to ask some reliable person for some time you deposit some uh, some money in my account so that i can show this pass book to the uh, college so that i will it's a secret don't tell anybody because that's a cheating actually in a way <laughs> because you say that i have 10 10 lakhs but it is only for that amount when it's printed then the money is taken back so see see here the the idea here is uh, the uh, you know when god when god gives this holy spirit to us or dep- uh, sorry i am talking about this christ righteousness to us is not something like that just given god sees you as how god sees christ you are you are uh, having the robe of christ on you you are holy you are a royal priesthood you are a fragrance and aroma of christ that's what it says here you are justified you are just you don't need to uh, when you stand before god you don't need to fear in trembling fear oh uh, i i uh, i'm sure god should forget this particular thing by mistake you don't need to fear that because god covers you with the righteousness of christ by crediting his righteous to your account god declares us justified in his sight and proclaims and not only justified now he says that okay you're justified now you're a hires which means that you are you have this inheritance of this eternal life beneficiaries of eternal life that we are looking forward and it is not a doubt it is not uncertainty it is a certainty in a believer's life and this is a helping or a driving force or a propeller for us you remember pilgrim's progress if you have not read this book pilgrim's progress how god blessed this man john bunyan you have to go and read this and his character you know the 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 character christian how he closes his years and runs to the heavenly pilgrimage that is what is is run is right and that is what we are looking forward for eternal life and that eternal life actually john 17 if you go it says it starts right here when you know the only true god i was in foolishness i didn't know this only true god and the one whom he sent jesus christ and that eternal life starts here and not only starts here and stops here but it is also something that carries us and that is a motivation i am relieved today because up to 7th verse we are finishing otherwise i have to be in a rush to finish to finish dear ones i want to close with this this two things then uh, we will see uh, next two aspects or helps 
that is a profitable life in Christ and also a fellowship life in Christ maybe uh, God willing in coming weeks we will see that but I want to close with this couple of thoughts in our lives that how a life transformed life it's not something that you need to struggle for this is God has graciously provided this to us and we don't need to struggle as a Christian even as we close pay attention to this one man Paul how God is using him pay attention to this what's happening 2000 years before in the island of Crete and it is not God stopped working and the same thing is happening Apostle Paul was trying to please God through his own strict regulations and rules and what not he was trying to follow and he was trying to show that he is zealous for God by his own but Christ was absent in his life and it is God who graciously appeared and the gospel truth was visible to him his eyes was open and he got life eternal life God touched him and it was his life was never the same that this this man is writing this letter this Paul who persecuted the church including in his weakness he says that believers I want to share I encourage you including in his weakness Paul says that God's power was perfected I don't need to fear about my weakness because grace is available to me God's grace is available to me it is at hand with me it is a help to me that's what this man and we say that Paul lived a transformed life and his life was transformed forever he didn't turn back not only he was transformed you see the light of the gospel in his life in him was shining out as a bright lighthouse that Titus his spiritual child that's what he says in verse 3 right verse, uh, verse 4 his, his, his spiritual uh, Titus was able to capture this light in Paul and was able to reflect in the island of Crete and in turn this enlightened the leaders and spiritual leaders of whom he is appointing and the members in the assemblies of Crete among the heathens and pagans who live a difficult life because their God was like that their God was whatever you call they can live that life but this is what you can see how this one man Christian it's an encouragement for all of us have you seen any time this nighttime satellite images image of earth specifically India while everywhere it is dark cities have a bright light right it's a it's a bright light spots shine in the city areas you know city it's a glow it's a beautiful picture when you see from space similarly if you have taken a satellite image of this crate of island of crate Paul and Titus time if you think that that imagine this through the lens of the gospel camera the these people are the living gospel truth will it will be illuminating you know or a lamp among the darkness in this isle, isle of crate that is what that is the sight which God will see you see they want this is a satellite picture of every believer in God's sight we who are once in darkness now we are the torch lights pointing to our neighbors to the everlasting eternal life for God's glory that is Christ they want this is if you see this is the reality and it is not something that we can keep uh, uh, avoiding and saying that I am not connected to this and if you are not tasted God's love I want to encourage you here even as we close this is what Jesus said while he was talking a spiritual leader a Jewish guru he was talking to Nicodemus if you're not born again or born of God or have this new birth you may be a Jewish guru listen to this truly truly I say to you he was Nicodemus unless you are born again unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God forget about entering you cannot see the kingdom of God John 3 3 they want it is like this a illustration allegory I want to present here in the ancient Rome Colosseum or amphitheaters several events and entertainment and sports took place in these places sometimes it's a drama or show but sometimes during intervals it is a gruesome and horrible thing the condemned prisoners would be executed in a horrible manner I don't want to take more into this picture sometimes it used to be for fun show too the prisoner who was starving for days and physically weak I like the action which Tanoj does physically weak he has no health often naked and unarmed would be thrown before the wild beast to be torn into pieces it's a sad picture imagine in such a wretched state and he was about to be torn into pieces or perished suddenly from nowhere the Redeemer appears 
when the crowd is cheering for such a fun and this man is hopeless and helpless and this deliverer appears not only appears at the right time he delivers and saves this captive at right time not only saves he justifies he cleanses from a physical and heartaches and pains and wounds in his life the places of this and places this erstwhile prisoner in a beautiful castle not just that it didn't stop that every day he nourishes and renews him with the new strength and assurance of an everlasting life and you and i are this wretched helpless prisoners and this is what christ did for us and if you haven't just tasted god's love i want to bring this picture to you that this is what specially i will close with this verse it says in verse 4 to 7 again i want to reiterate this verse when the goodness and kindness of god as savior appeared in our helpless state he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness but according to his own mercy by washing and regeneration and renewal of the holy spirit whom he poured out on us richly through jesus christ as savior so that being justified by his grace we might become hires according to the hope of eternal life dear ones this is the power and the motivation for our transformed life a victorious christian life older men and younger men older women and younger women employees or employers who are you are it is a personal letter of encouragement to you and suppose i i don't know if uh, imagine a loving father writes a letter to his child and uh, who's in a hostel or far away and uh, his child throws the letter in a garbage or ignores it and then waits for the father to come in a dream or a vision and speak to him it is sounds foolish right because there is a reveal we wait sometimes that our name will be called from the pulpit zacchaeus then we say i it's to me god is speaking you know i hope nobody is zacchaeus here that's how we imagine that our name should be called from the pulpit and they will jump and run to the pulpit that's not here imagine this this letter is personally to you christian it's a clear call if you are struggling to live this transformed life remember titus is a loud and clear call personally to you it's your name here god breathed his letters and preserved amid all the perils and troubles and persecutions and politics and whatever happened this treasure is revealed to you and me personal and it is for you that we may live a victorious and transformed life right on the earth whatever sinful things are happening around us don't amplify any sin beyond this that is so gracious and powerful in god's sight nothing can be amplified beyond what god has already done transform lives because of the truth of the gospel that illuminates our heart all in the light of god's word this is what hope for us not only for cretans even for us today it will help us to see god's radiance god's glory that is christ open your lives to the examination of the truth of the gospel and come under shelter of a commitment committed uh, christ preaching christ exalting church come on board to fellowship and mentorship you will not sink if you don't shift your eyes from jesus let's pray father we thank you for this beautiful truth which paul recorded inspired by holy spirit breath by you years before but still it resonates in our heart it still enriches us still speaks to us today whatever we are facing lord and this is what happened to us goodness and kindness of god appeared through jesus christ and delivered us that we may live illuminating life in your sight father we thank you for this that we can live a transformed life because what you have done and that is sufficient for us your holy spirit which is richly poured on us that is sufficient for us your word is sufficient for us thank you lord speak to us and if we know you and we are struggling help us to taste and enjoy and fight for this joy of this transformed life not a grudging life but a cheerful and obedient and joyful for our own joy fighting life lord thank you and if you have not tasted your love help us to understand what you told to nicodemus help us to understand this new birth a newness new creation for all of us who don't know you let your holy spirit work in our hearts lord bless this words father in jesus name man